better offensive pressure. Uh, but of course, it can still target that Kyogre with the grass type moves. But here we are, guys. Junior hmm. Finals Game 1. Team Previews up on the screen. Team Previews there for you guys. So we got Rayquaza and Kyogre as a pairing for Pietro. And Ankel got Lunala and Groudon as a pairing. Uh, Lou, wh what would you see? Wh 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 which pairing got the upper hand in this? Well, normally Rayquaza Kyogre, as they have better um, sort of utensils to be able to deal with the weather situations here, tend to have kind of that um, overriding advantage against Groudon. And if you're on Ankel's side, you'll need to make sure that you're preserving that Groudon well, bringing it in when you're not going to be um, sort of falling victim to something like a weather switch in and a water type attack, for example. Yeah. You need to make sure it's well preserved, as it has some really strong advantage against Pokemon like Tapu Koko, Gengar, and Incineroar on Pietro's side. So that Groudon is going to be key. But first of all, Whimsicott and Incineroar are jumping out on the field for Pietro, whereas Ankel has kicked off his championship final hit with Lunala and Tapu Lele. Oh, I really like this already. Like, Pietro <laughs> wants to go maybe for some speed control really early on, and Ankel uh, starting off with an uh, offensive uh, duo, like, uh, thanks to Tapu Lele's psychic terrain. When Lunala runs, like, Psyshock, for example, it powers up his, its own moves, and of course, Whimsicott relies a lot on the Prankster ability, yes. and uh, Tapu Lele uh, prevents that for all grounded Pokémon on Ankel's side. Exactly. The one thing Whimsicott can do, though, is still go for that Tailwind. Psychic Terrain won't affect it getting that speed control up on its side of the field. Incineroar, unable, though, of course, to go for that Fake Out. Um, Whimsicott here is indeed going to get mm -hmm. the speed boost up. Tailwind on the field. In and Cinero obviously applying a lot of pressure with something like a Snarl or any kind of dark type move going into that opposing Lunala. First of all though, Moonblast coming out from Tapu Lele, gonna get the special attack drop on the Incinero, but it's not gonna worry about that too much at all, as Tailwind is matched, so speed controls, level playing field here from that Lunala. Incinero though, going straight for a U-turn. Oh, I really like that play. Pietro going straight for Tailwind, going straight for U-turn to bring in a strong Pokemon uh, afterwards, and I really like Ankel's plays as well, like he's trying to get uh, damage with Moonblast off as soon as possible uh, and also matching the Tailwind and not having to fear about uh, being on court by Whimsicott thanks to the Psychic Terrain. Mm -hmm. uh, also if you still got like a Sea Crystal you can still get away with being on court somehow. So. Yeah, there we see Kyogre entering the field for Pietro. Exactly. This is kind of the first weather introduced into this game. So Rain is up on the field at the moment. But if you're Pietro, you have to remember Ankel could have that Groudon in the back. So you yeah. have to be wary. If you're going to go for some water type moves, are you just going to be brave and bold and go for them? Or are you going to maybe switch in your Equaza to be safe in case you predict that Groudon going to come in? Because, of course, if the sun's in the sky, no water type moves are going to be able to go off on the battlefield. Yeah, this is where the mind game starts already. But uh, Ankel still got the Lunala and the Shadow Shield is still active uh, mm -hmm. so he ha doesn't have to worry about too strong water types too much uh, but we do see Lunala uh, going Ooh. straight <laughs> for the Seamoth I think Oh, no, this nah, looks like a Twinkle. Yeah, oh. Twinkle Tackle here coming out from that Whimsicott. Um, love seeing that Z-Move dance there. One we <laughs> haven't been able to showcase too much here at all. Um, so Twinkle Tackle coming off this Whimsicott. Going to go straight into one of the opposing Pokemon on Ankhal's side, and it's going to be that Tapu Lele. Oh, this is going to be big damage on the Tapu Lele. Although the move animation looks so cute. Ooh. Oh, hangs on there. Yeah, didn't see a focus ass animation go off there either. So Tapu Lele just able to survive, showing that Angel has maybe built it that little bit extra bulky. Yeah. Um, really helps him out there, keeping Tapu Lele on the field, able to maybe go for another Moonblast um, into the next turn. We saw him try and target down that Kyogre previously. Yeah, Kyogre obviously protected, uh, saving himself. Now Tapu Lele is switching out for Angel in favor for the crowd. And so are we going to see a Rayquaza switch in as well? for Pietro. Well, that's something Pietro will need to have predicted if he wants to go for any water type moves with this Kyogre. He's played with it relatively defensively at the moment, going for the Protect previously, so this could be the turn where he wants to up the ante and switch in Rayquaza to get off some offensive pressure. Um, of course, he could always have gone for a non water type move, maybe something like an Ice Beam just to break the Shadow Shield on the opposing um, Lunala. Um, no switches, though. It's going to be the Moonblast <laughs> coming out from uh, the Whimsicott thinking, I will break the Shadow Shield on this Pokemon. Um, and here we go with the Z-Move. I think this is now the one from Lunala. Yeah, I really like the play from Pietro. Like, he he, he just wanted to break the uh, uh, Shadow Shield on Lunala, but I also like Angel's play a lot. Mm -hmm. he, he sent in the Groudon just to be safe against Water-type attacks, and he predicted uh, correctly that there is no Rayquaza coming in uh, on Pietra's side, and is pretty much free to get 
big damage on the Kyogre now. Exactly, this big damage on Kyogre really going to help it out um, from if it's going for something like a Water Spout, that's going to be greatly reduced now as its HP will have dwindled down to below 50% here. That again covers any kind of Water Type moves if that Rayquaza was going to come in, but as it has not, the Water Type move from that Kyogre has evaporated up into the Sunshine, so no damage coming off from Kyogre. And yeah. it's sitting in quite a precarious position now, mm. something like a Moongeist Beam and even the Precipice Blades coming out from the Groudon should be able to pick up the KO. Yeah, or a Psy Shock, for example, yes. and now we know the speeds like Lunala moved before Kyogre, mm -hmm. so even if Pietro sense in that Rayquaza that Kyogre, Kyogre still has to take an attack from Lunala and maybe Groudon as well uh, before he gets off a strong water type attack. And there we see Rayquaza jumping into the field and I like this play from Pietro. He needs to start going on the offensive with his Kyogre. You know, it can deal out a big amount of damage, but so can Lunala with that Psy Shock. In the psychic terrain though, being boosted up, is it going to be enough? Yes, it yeah. is. And Kyogre will be KO'd. Rayquaza unable to help out his buddy this turn as Groudon does go for that Precipice Blade. So Rayquaza able to come in unscathed um, and it does give Pietro the opportunity to bring in another Pokemon now for that free switch as Kyogre's gone down. Yes, but mm, I think Pietro would have enjoyed having the Kyogre on the field a bit longer, but mm -hmm. that was really clever planned by Ankial, uh, knowing that after Kyogre used Protect, uh, Lunala can target it down and getting uh, uh, the early KO on one of the m most prominent attackers of mm -hmm. Pietro's team. So uh, he brought himself in a really good position, but it's not over yet. Like, S we still got Rayquaza for Pietro on the uh, field, now paired with Incineroar. Inci Incineroar obviously threatening the Lunala and Rayquaza uh, threatening the Groudon a lot. Yeah, it's interesting he brought in the Incineroar here. Yes, it goes off for the Intimidate, but um, I think I'm correct in thinking that Tailwind has now expired, so Lunala could be in a position to get that set up again. Um, of course, Pietro didn't bring in his Whimsicott to try and match that. Um, Incineroar can apply some good pressure um, with something like a Dark Time move against Lunala, but even at minus one, a Precipice Blaze from that opposing Groudon is really, really going to hurt. Yeah. Um, oh, it looks like he forgot about the Psychic Terrain there, maybe went for a Fake Out. And this might be, well, we're going to see a Dragon Ascent from uh, Rayquaza coming into Lunala oh. and getting a knockout there. Oh, that's so good for Pietro there. Able to stop Lunala going for any more offensive pressure damage and also removing that Tailwind potential from his side of the field. Pietro, of course, with that Whimsicott still in the back, if he does want to bring it back into the field, yeah. there's nothing really on Angel's team that can stop him now going for that Tailwind, getting that speed advantage up, and then maybe bringing in his heavy hitters for later on in the game to start picking away at the team. Tabu Lele, they're going to come back onto the field at quite a crucial time for Angel because that psychic train had left the field. He's now able to reset it once again. Yeah, and that, that uh, Tabu Lele now, uh, maybe it's uh, equipped with a Choice Scarf that lets yes. it move before Rayquaza. is threatening that Rayquaza a lot. And since like uh, it's paired with a Kyogre, uh, Rayquaza might be a more offensive one, as we've seen. <laughs> it took out that uh, Lunala pretty well. So let's see. Yeah, we see the Moonblast into Ooh. the Rayquaza. Oh, it does ah. a huge amount of damage and picks up the one-hit knockout against that Rayquaza. As we saw that Tabu Lele previously moving much faster than Lunala and was locked into that Moonblast, and that's the choice it's gone for again. The Groudon, though, going here for the Fire Punch. Don't know whether that was maybe going into the Rayquaza as well to try and um, yeah. double up in case Tabu Lele wasn't able to get the KO, but it certainly was all in an effort by itself. But unfortunately for Tabu Lele, it has been KO'd in return and will return right back to the Pokeball. Um, Groudon here in a nice position to go for another Precipice Blades against this Incineroar. You know, it's at 50% health that's easily going to be able to pick up the KO whereas Pietro has now brought his Whimsicott back into the field so this is where he could potentially go for um, something like that Tailwind but looking at the two Pokemon yeah. he's got against Angels, I don't feel like they have the offensive pressure needed to take down this Groudon. Yeah this Groudon is, is uh, having a good time right now like yes uh, threatening the Incineroar. Whimsicott is uh, not known for uh, running like Grass not, but maybe there might be an endeavor or something uh, which uh, can cause trouble for that Groudon. Yeah, Endeavor's an interesting thing we've seen on Whimsicott before. It is more commonly done with something like a Focus Sash variety, and we've seen that this one is um, holding that Varium Z. Um, so not too sure if that's going to be something that um, Whimsicott has, but it could have been a good option for him instead. Dazzling Gleam going to come out from that Tapu Coco, going to chip away at both these Pokemon, but Groudon going for that big, strong Precipice Blades. Yeah. Um, Connects into that Whimsicott, not enough to pick up the KO, but Incineroar going to try and deal out some big damage in return with Flare Blitz. But of course, it's going to take some recoil from this as well. Yeah, but we do see the burn on Tapu Koko. Uh, 
It's incinerator equipped with a berry. It is. There you <laughs> go. Like, uh, I really like uh, flare blades on incinero uh, when you get yourself uh, down into to range. Where, into, into where your berry uh, is activating. So, um, but I still really do like the position. Ankia brought him in. Like, Pier Pietro set up the tailwind, got the speed control, but that incinero has to take out <laughs> two Pokemon now. Yeah, and there's not really a lot that Incineroar can do against Groudon unless it's able to keep jumping out of the way of Precipice Blades. Yeah. Um, you can see there the Moonblast as well, going to be resisted by the Groudon. Tapu Koko just happy to keep going for these Dazzling Gleams, going to connect obviously on both Pokemon, pick up a KO against Whimsicott as well, and now Incineroar does have to try um, its best to try and take down one of these Pokemon, but Groudon at the full HP um, isn't, I think, going to be able to be felled by this Incineroar. Of course, one thing that... Pietro does still have sort of the opportunity to do is try and gain some more of these sort of um, statistics from how much damage yeah, things yeah. like Flare Blitz are doing so that going into the next game he's aware of that information he can maybe use it to kind of form a, a strategy so that he can adapt going into game two because Ankel wins game one he is one game away from taking the Latin America <laughs> International Championships oh what an intense match Luke like I really like the plans both players brought to the table yes uh, and uh, Ankel really had some key moments mm -hmm. uh, where he, he he had a really well timed C move from the Nala coming. Yes he did. Uh, almost knocking out uh, that Kyogre in one hit but then the second turn afterwards that side shock was enough so that was like kind of the, the key where he saw okay Kyogre protected the last turn now it's time for me to target it down and to get uh, it knocked out as soon as possible because obviously Kyogre when uh, under weather control it's uh, the most potential Pokemon for Pietro. Yes, exactly. I think it was the Groudon and Tapu Lele on Ankel's side that really pulled it through for him. Tapu Lele using that terrain to really shut down um, a lot of the things that maybe Whimsicott, particularly Incineroar, really liked to do. You could see Pietro went for, I think it was that fake out with the Incineroar, and that's something that you really like to use yeah. um, to maneuver around, and having that restricted can be quite devastating. Um, one thing I think Pietro really needs to do in this next game is take down that Groudon as quickly as possible. He has the ability to do it with the Kyogre and the Rayquaza, um, so as long as he's able to move these Pokemon in the right ways, yeah. um, he'll be able to hit that Groudon with a water type move and then remove that threat. But it's on the field at the moment for Ankal. You've got the Groudon and the Lunala. Both is restricted out there in force. And Pietro there sticking with the Whimsicott and yep. the Incineroar. I really do like Pietro's plan, like mm. getting up a table as soon as possible. Incineroar going for a U-turn to maybe uh, break the Shadow Shield from yes. Lunala and get in the Kyogre and then being able to fire off strong water type attacks again. And thanks to Intimidate, uh, Incineroar may just straight straight away going for a U-turn once again uh, and Pietro sets up Tailwind there. I also like this position here for the Groudon. It's, yeah. it's quite free. I mean, you've got to worry about the fake out coming out from that Incineroar, but Lunala could, of course, switch out, bring in Tapu Lele, um, and that leaves Groudon free to go for something like a Precipice Blades, even at the minus one. Um, of course, the um, Incineroar isn't going to appreciate that at all. Uh, but Groudon instead just going to switch right out, maybe thinking that Rayquaza was going to jump in yeah. um, and then start applying a lot of pressure and messing around with the weather. Tabu Lele does join the field, though, in the different slot, though. Uh, but this will help out Lunala, maybe trying to match that tailwind of the Whimsicott once again. Yeah, that Lunala uh, matching tailwind is crucial mm -hmm. uh, for Angel to uh, not step back. Uh, I really do like uh, how this works out. Now, have we seen a fake out? I think we're going to see a U-turn. Yeah, there we go. So Pietro's trying to uh, bring in one of uh, his strong Pokemon once more again. But I really do like Angel switching in that Tapu Lele uh, in that slot, pressuring uh, all Pokemon on Pietro's side on the field. We see him bring his Kyogre back into the field, which is something that he did very strongly in game one, getting that in nice and early and getting the rain up on the field. And this is good well from Ankal. He knows that he switched out his ground on Preserver in the back. He knows how critical it is in this matchup. And of course, now that Tapu Lele is on the field, that will apply so much pressure to Rayquaza if that's in the back for Pietro. Because yeah. we know with the Choice Scarf, it can pick up that one hit KO with Moonblast. So again, Pietro has to work around this Tapu Lele, find a way to pick up the KO against it. We saw him go for the twinkle tackle on the Whimsicott previously mm -hmm. so that could be a way to try and remove that Tapu Lele from the field. Yeah, this might be a really good idea Lou. like that Tapu Lele is really threatening Pietro uh, Kyogre if it, if it goes for uh, attacking since the Tailwind matched it might uh, just take damage in return but Angel deciding to preserve the Lunala once more and sending in the Primal Groudon 
Yeah, exactly. Keeping Lunala in the back. It wants to use that Z move at a critical time. And Kyogre going for the protector. That was mm -hmm. definitely not the time to use your Z move as it wouldn't be dealing the big power that it needs to. Getting Groudon on the field again could apply pressure going forward. But once again, you have to worry about that Rayquaza. Looks like it's the Twinkle Tackle coming out oh, from yeah. Pietro. And I love this play from him here. He wants to be able to bring that Rayquaza in the next turn to help out Kyogre while Groudon's on the field. And he cannot safely do that with Tapu Lele on the field because Moonblast could easily go into that slot, pick up the KO as Rayquaza joins. So trying to remove Tapu Lele from the field is critical for Pietro going into the next couple of turns. Yeah, I'm, re I'm, re I'm really curious now if this Twinkle Tackle is going to be enough. Not oh, quite, not no. quite. So Tapu Lele holding on. Yeah, and this, was, this is crucial. Like Tapu Lele is now still pressuring Kyoga and of course a potential Rayquaza switch in from Pietro's side on the field. So maybe Pietro wants to step back a bit, like position himself again. That Incineroar, for example, might switch in also. But we do see the Rayquaza coming in for Pietro. And Ooh, being brave. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And of course, with its airlock ability, Kyoga now can uh, get off some water type attacks. But we do see Tapulele targeting into Kyoga with a Psy Shock and Groudon oh. going for Is a Fire enough? Punch. Oh. Going for the double up into that Kyogre, removing it from the field. I was going to say Pietro sort of high risk, high reward, bringing in that Rayquaza, knowing it could fall victim to a Moonblast. But Tapulele going for the Psy Shock instead. Absolutely amazing play oh, there yeah. by Angel. He didn't just go for kind of the obvious move and thinking that that Rayquaza could switch in going for the Moonblast. Instead, let's just remove the actual water type threat from the field because then even if Rayquaza comes in, if it's not holding something like a water type move, which sometimes it doesn't, um, then Groudon still doesn't have to worry about taking any water type. Yeah, and now we are in a pretty similar situation like we've been in mm -hmm. last game. Like uh, Angel took out the uh, Kyogre from Pietro, knowing this is the number one threat. And Pietro now has to deal with a Groudon and still a full healthy uh, Lunala in the mm -hmm. back for Angel. Uh, and uh, obviously this Tapolele is uh, holding a choice scarf uh, and he's going to, <laughs> to get preserved once more. Yeah, I like this play by Angel. The fact that Pietro has brought his Whimsicott back onto the field in sort of this last turn of Tailwind, if that Whimsicott's able to survive, it can then be guaranteed to get Tailwind up the next turn. So Angel wisely brings the Lunala back onto the field to make sure that he too can match that Tailwind. Of course, with the Psychic Train again, he yeah. doesn't have to worry about any fake out from that opposing Incineroar, because Lunala's not going to mind about it, but it helps out that Groudon too, which is just going to go for the Protect on this particular turn. Really safe turn there for Angel, really well played. Uh, that Whimsicott though, breaking Lunala's Shadow Shield and now Incineroar is on the field. Uh, it got off a, a Intimidate onto mm -hmm. Groudon, so uh, it can stand the Precipice Blades uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, maybe it's enough uh, to, to pressure that Lunala uh, with a strong dark type attack and Whimsicott straight going for a Tailwind there, setting up the speed control once more. But again, Angel <laughs> uh, goes for his own Tailwind, matching the speed. Groudon going for a strong, strong Prince of Hasplate into Incineroar and Whimsicott Ooh. there. Yeah, showing the bog um, variant of that Incineroar there, able to take the Precipice Blades. Um, also helped out, of course, by the Intimidate, but one of the things we always love to see, of course, is that berry in the back pocket, yeah. able to regain some HP going forward. Incineroar, though, going to go straight for the Flare Blitz, going to be boosted up by the Sun as well, going into that opposing Lunala. Does a good chunk of damage, not enough to pick up the KO, and, of course, Incineroar is going to take some recoil, but thanks to its yeah. berry, it's able to remain on the field going into the next turn. That was not quite enough, and Lunala is now threatening both Pokemon on Pietro's side mm -hmm. of the field, so does Groudon. So Angel once again is in a position where he's in the driver's seat. He threatens all the knockouts and Piet Pietro has to switch safely and uh, be, be a bit more defensive. But Angel can make use of that by just chipping damage once more, once more. Ah, that's a really tough situation now. Yeah, the Lunala going for the Protect there, saving itself from being KO'd by the Moonblast of Whimsicott as the Groudon goes for an Eruption, I think that was. Yeah. Um, that was something we talked about yesterday as well that we haven't seen so far. Works so well in that sunshine based off the HP of the Groudon, able to pick up the KO against that Whimsicott. Yes, it's not super effective against the Incineroar, but it puts it into a good amount of sort of chip range that maybe even something like a Moonguise Beam could pick up the KO here. Yeah, and if that happens, that Rayquaza feels pretty lonely yeah. on Pietro's side <laughs> on the field. Now entering the field um, once again like this is a really tough situation for Pietro to be in that Rayquaza has now to deal with uh, both 
Groudon, Lunala, and of course, there's still Tapolele, Ember Tag, and one more Pokemon. Exactly, that's the problem here for Pietro. Even if he is able to take down Lunala and Groudon using Incineroar and Rayquaza, that Tapolele in the back can just come in, fire off a Moonblast with its Choice Scarf, um, and we'll be able to pick up the KO against it. And I think that's where Tailwind has been so critical in this game. Both players have been forced to make sure that they are getting their Tailwinds up in the same turn, yeah. just to make sure that one side does not gain the advantage. Um, so it's making sure that you're keeping it at an evil playing field and matching your opponent. Rayquaza here, just going to go for a Earthquake. Um, that looks like here. So going to pick up the KO against its partner Incineroar, but it doesn't have to pick up the KO against Lunala as well. Groudon just going to hang on. Yeah. Um, interesting choice there from the Rayquaza. This could have been like really crucial if you yeah. got the knockout on, on both Pokemon for Angel. So Pietro saw his winning condition mm -hmm. by taking out uh, both Pokemon on this field with Earthquake. Unfortunately, not quite enough yet. Uh, and Angel can send in the Tapolele uh, on the Lunala slot now pretty much uh, for free. And uh, now that Tapolele once mm. again got psychic terrain up. So, uh, no it extreme speeds or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, it doesn't care about extreme speed and being equipped with a choice scarf, threatening that Rayquaza with a strong, strong mm -hmm. Moonblast. I mean, for all we know, this Rayquaza, it could have been sort of a high roll from that Moonblast previously that picked yes. up the one-hit KO. So if the Earthquake hitting both the opposing Pokemon could pick up the KO, if this Rayquaza is able to survive, yes, it, it does. Is. Able to survive on 19 hit points, gives Pietro the opportunity to go for that Earthquake once again. Tabu Lele at such low HP, able to be KO'd against it. Um, Pietro knows he's going to be able to pick up the KO against Groudon next turn with it. But what is Angha's last Pokemon going to be? Uh, Pietro brought himself back thanks to Earthquake. Yes which is amazing he he identified okay i have to go for uh, multi target moves yes hit both opponents hit both opponents and uh, he he was willing to knock out his own incinera in the process and if that rayquaza is able to move before that tapu koko <laughs> which is oh. not a situation we have too often it's kind of the irony here where Rayquaza's got something like Earthquake that yeah. was super effective against both of the opposing Pokemon. He also has the Delta Stream up, which will reduce damage from Electro-type attacks, but due to the low HP um, and the fact that there is a Dazzling Gleam on Tapu Koko means uh. that Ankel is able to win game two, and he is your 2020 Latin America International Champion for the Junior Division. Congratulations.